right to share and heart this live, we need to make sure that everyone is seeing this in the world. Just before we begin serving, there are a few announcements that we would like to update you on. Beginning February the 1st, we will be fasting and praying for 21 days. Team, can you believe we are fasting for 21 days? 21 days? 21 days. We are fasting and praying. Please be sure to see the flyer for more information. Hey, what else is going on at KDT? Well, save your date, mark your calendar, February 26th and 27th. We are in a revival. Are you ready to be revived? Yes, I'm ready to be revived. Are you ready to be revived? Are you ready for your KDT experience? I'm ready for my KDT experience. Do me a favor. Be sure to like, heart, and share this live. And remember, KDT is a safe place.
You kept a hedge of protection all around us. And we tell you, thank you, Lord. You've been so good to us, God. You've been so kind to us, God. So for that, we tell you, thank you. You made ways, God. You continue to make ways, God. And for that, we tell you, thank you. You kept our jobs. You kept our homes. For that, we tell you, thank you, God. We just want to tell you, thank you. We don't want to ask you for anything in this moment, God. But we just want to tell you, thank you for everything. Whatever we can think of, God, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for everything that you've done, God. Now that we thank you, God, we just want you to ask, we just want to ask that you have your way in this service. Have your way in this service, God. Have your way in this service, God. As we continue in our month of consecration, God, bless us in no other way, God. In these 21 days, God, bless us, keep us. God, we thank you in advance, God, for keeping us. We thank you in advance for blessing us. God, we just want to tell you thank you. Lord, thank you for making ways. Thank you for opening doors. God, we just want to tell you. Thank you, God. We don't deserve some of the things that you do for us, God. But we want to tell you thank you. God, we don't deserve some of the doors you open for us. But we want to tell you thank you. God, some of the things that we do, God, forgive us, God, for the things that we've done that was not like you, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we love you and we bless you. And we just want to tell you thank you, God, for everything that you've done, God. Thank you, everything that you did God thank you everything that you're going to do God thank you God help us to love on you today God and these 21 days God help us get a deeper relationship with you God and these 21 days God help us get a deeper understanding of you God and these 21 days God help us to go deeper in you God strengthen our relationship with you God in the name of the Lord Jesus make ways again God for us hallelujah God and we'll forever give your name glory we'll forever give your name honor because you've been so good to us God you are a great God and we love you you are a great God and we adore you you are a great God and we appreciate you God everybody under the sound of my voice God touch them in a special way God every need in this house God we ask that you need it God every need in this house God we ask that you need it God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Touch our leader right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Um, Every unspoken request, God, that he has before you, God. Everything in the midnight hour when nobody else is around, God. When he's calling on you, God, we ask that you answer him, God. When he's calling on you, God, give him the clarity, God. When he's calling on you, God, let him see, God, only you in situations, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, protect us, God. Keep us covered, God. We bind COVID-19. We bind the pandemic in the name of the Lord Jesus. We bind anything that's not like you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We bind anything that's not like you. We bind anything that's not like you. We bind anything that's not like you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help somebody cry out today, God. Help somebody get what they need today, God. Help somebody get what they came for today, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every heart's desire, God, give it to us in the name of the Lord Jesus. For you promised in your word, God, that you'll hear our moanings, God. You promised in your word, God, that you'll hear our groanings, God. So hear us today, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Even when we couldn't say a word, God, hear us, head of the whole side. Hear our tears, God, when we can't say a word, God. Hear our groaning, God, when we can't say a word, God. Hear our midnight cries, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we'll forever give you glory. You get the glory. You get the honor. 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 You get the glory. 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 We just want to tell you thank you for everything that you've done, God. No glory is to us, God, but to you be the glory. No glory is unto us, God, but to God be the glory. 
to God be the glory. Whatever situation we're believing you for, God, we believe, hey, glory, we believe, God, whatever you need him to come through for, we believe, God, whatever door you need to be open, we believe, God. Why don't you lick your hands all over the building and shout real loud, I believe, God. Come on, lick your hands all over the building and shout, I believe, God. Yes, Lord. Come on. Whatever you need, hey, whatever you ask for, I believe he's going to do it. And there's 21 days of consecration. Whatever you ask, hey, somebody look at your neighbor and say, whatever I ask, hey, glory to God, he's going to do it, hey. If you believe God, lift your hands and say, I believe God. Glory to your name, whatever you ask. Somebody say, this week it shall be done. Whatever you ask, hey. Matter of fact, whatever you think, it shall be done. According to the will. I said, according to the will of God. Whatever you can ask. He said, exceedingly, abundantly, above all. I said, exceedingly. All you got to do is think about it, and it's already done. All you got to do is think about it, and it's already done. Yeah. I said it's already done. You ought to look at your neighbor and say it's already done. You don't even got to open your mouth. All you got to do is think about it, and it's already done. All you got to do is pray about it, and it's already done. You ought to shout. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Whatever you ask something, according to his word, he said he's going to do it. You never should worry. You never should pray because he promised he promised think about it and it shall be done hallelujah yes Lord we thank him for what's already been done we thank him for what's already working out he said whatsoever we ask in his name he gonna give it to us so we ask for your power and we ask for your strength Jesus and we ask for your healing and we ask for your anointing fall down on us hallelujah because this is the day that the Lord has made and we go rejoice y'all we go rejoice and be glad and be glad in it and the glad people in the house I'm glad I'm so glad. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah that everything that I asked him, he's already working it out. So all I got to do is lift him. All I got to do is magnify him. All I got to do is seek him because it's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. in him I don't care what they do when you give God a hallelujah from your soul yes Lord hallelujah This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day 
that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Whoa, oh. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be so we say hallelujah we bless your name hallelujah and we lift your name hallelujah and we lift you high And be glad in it. I will rejoice. Celebrate and Jesus with us and say, Hallelujah. And we bless your name. Hallelujah. And we lift your name. And we lift you high. Hallelujah. 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 And we bless your name. Yeah, yeah. And we lift your name. Be standing on your feet and opening up your mouth and giving God some praise. This part is real simple, y'all. It's the highest praise. Oh, lift your voice and say, Hallelujah. Lift your voice and say, Hallelujah. Come on and lift your voice and say, Hallelujah. We say, Hallelujah. Come on and lift your voice and say, Shout out to God with the voice of 
any trial help us celebrate a big God today hallelujah No. 
nothing my God. Jesus with us. You can groove a little bit this morning. Clap your hands. If you know that God gave you the victory, help us sing this chant. Victory, I got it. I thank God, I got it. Victory, I got it. I thank God, I got it. You say. Precious. 
victory then open your mouth like you got it I said if you got it open your mouth like you got it no if you really got it I said open your mouth like you got it somebody say for seven days I've been giving God all I got all I got left all I got left is a all I got left is a that's all I got left. All I got left is a thank you. I don't, I don't have much strength for anything else. All I got left is my thank you. And I want to know, has the Lord been good to anybody here today? I said, has the, has the Lord been good to anybody here today? Today, has he been... Today, has he been good? Today, has he? Not yesterday, I'm talking about today. Since you woke up this morning, has he been good to you? Come on, since you traveled from your home to here, has he, has he kept you? Has he sustained you? Has he watched over you? I want to know, has the Lord been good to you? And for this we give him praise today. I said for this we give him praise. For the fact that I still have breath in my body, I give him praise. For the fact that he brought me over, I give him praise. For the fact that he let me see another day, I give him praise. And every day above the ground is a good day. And I'm just grateful that I'm on the other side of the dirt today. I said, I, I, I'm just grateful I'm on the other side of the dirt today. I, I'm grateful they're not lowering me down the, and putting dirt over top of me. I said, I'm just grateful I'm on the other side of the dirt. Should have lost my mind, should be dead and gone, should be crazy, should be delusional, but I'm still here, and it's by the grace of God. It is by the grace of God that I'm still here. So we thank the Lord today for all that he's done and all that he continues to do. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful just to be alive. I said, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful just to be alive. And I really, really have, I really, really have the testimony now that if the Lord never does another thing, he has really already done enough for me. And I know some of you still waiting on some things and some of you still 
you know, you still got your hand out, but I got my hands up, and I'm just telling him thank you. Because if he never does another thing, he's already done more than I deserve. And for that, I give God praise. And if you are excited and saying, listen, I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody to push me or, or, or try to convince me that the Lord's been good to me. But if you know for a fact that the Lord has been good to you, then I just want you to open your mouth real loud and tell God thank you. Just tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for what he's done and how he's kept you. He's been good. We want to bless the Lord today. We want to bless the Lord today. We want to bless the Lord today and, and give it. We want to bless the Lord today and give it. I'm going to ask everybody that will. Everybody that will get a seed, get your seeds in your hand. If this is your week, if this is your week to, to tithe and give, then come on. If this is your week to tithe and give, then you come on. Come on, nobody got to convince you by now. If this is your week to tithe and give, if this is your week to tithe and give, then you come on. You can give by Givelify, Cash App, or Venmo. The information is on the screen. It's been seven whole days, and the Lord has brought us over. It's been seven days. Some of you ain't never seen a commitment like this before. But I'm here to tell you it's going to be good for you. It may not feel good to you, but it's going to be good for you. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to, sometimes you just got to, got to turn your plate down. Sometimes you got to be willing to turn your plate down so that you can get something different from the Lord. everybody get your everybody get your seed today get your offering in your hands if you're there you're with us virtually you can give by givelify at kingdom deliverance tabernacle if you want to give by cash app dollar sign kingdom pt19 come on everybody everybody get your seeds in your hand everybody get your seed in your hand i'm not gonna pay them no mind right now because if i do it's the, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to pay them no mind right now. Because I promise you, if I do, this whole church going to be upside down. I'm not going to pay them no mind right now. Don't wave your hand. Keep your hands down. Keep your hands to yourself today. I got to preach this word. I'm not paying that no mind. I repeat. I'm not doing that. Listen, get your seed in your hand. Everybody get... I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. No. Everybody get your seed. Everybody get your seed in your hand. Can y'all clap your hands for my baby? My baby's here today. Clap your hands for London. That's my baby. My baby got to travel with me today. Got to travel with me today. Come on. You gonna receive the offer? All right. Come on, everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. Get your gifts in your hand. If you're given by your phone, just wave your phone at me so I know. Wave your phone at me so I know. Come on, we want to we wanna give unto God today. Father, thank you for these, your people. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. If you gave electronically, take your seat. If you have your envelopes, come over here. Debit cards are right on this side right here. Come on, let's give unto the Lord today.
Listen, listen. I think this is a good space right here. Now listen, this now this is what we're gonna do. And I want you to know this is the this is the expectation of the house moving forward. You know, Bree, we're not gonna jump up in spurts. You know? I'm praising and I wanna praise them and then when they sit down, then I'm gonna jump up. If we gonna do it, then we gonna do it together. It ain't no, ain't no stars here. The only star is the maker and the creator himself. So if by chance you feel like he's worthy of just a little bit of your energy, you got 60 seconds to hit the floor right here. You got 60 seconds and then I'm moving. I said if he, if he's worthy of it, If he's worthy of it, only if he's worthy. Come on, all my virtual viewers, if the Lord is worthy of it, then you give him praise in your house. You might got to pull your car over. You're only going to do it if he's worthy. Come on, you can clap your hands. You can clap your hands for a few moments. I said only if he's worthy. If he ain't done nothing for you, don't worry about it. Come on, wherever you are, in your house, in your car, in your kitchen, in the sanctuary, I said give him praise. If he's worthy of it, if you feel like he's worthy of it, then give it to him. If he's worthy of it in your book, then give it to him. Come on, you got a few more moments. We got to move. You got a few more seconds, and we're moving. That feels good to me. Come on, I said that feels good to me. Lord, have mercy. I said it feels. Lord, have mercy. I said it feels good to me. Lord, have mercy. It feels good to me. It feels good to me. Lord, it feels good to me. It's been a moment since I heard it. But oh, when I heard the sound, the sound of victory. Yes, indeed. Lord Jesus, y'all got to get me out of here. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. All right, y'all. All right, y'all save some for later. 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 Sit down, sit down. Let me push it. Sit down. Sit. sit down, sit down, sit down. I don't need everybody. I just need a few people to clap those hands. I said just a few, clap your hands like this, like he's been good to you. I hear you, Lord. Yes, indeed. We thank the Lord today. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. I feel the strong word of God today. I'm going to fix all right. All right, listen. Let's, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Let me do this. Isaiah 43. 
verse 16. Sit down. Sit, sit, sit. 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 When I heard you, lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. When I heard you singing today. The Lord said, that's what I've been trying to get out of you. The Lord said, and over the seven days, you told the Lord, I feel like I made more growth. But God, I want you to kill me even more because I don't want to go back. And the Lord said, as long as you stay submitted and humble to me, your voice will produce a sound like that every single time. Somebody prepared to give up today. But the Lord said when they heard you virtually, they told God they was going to give him one more chance. And the Lord said, because you've made it all about me again, and it's not about you, the financial blessing you need, God said, I'm going to send it to you this week. Now, if you're not jealous because it's not you, then clap your hands for her. Isaiah 43, maturity looks good on you. I say it to you again, maturity looks good on you. Maturity looks good on you. Maturity looks good on you. The Lord said, we finally seen the real ebony. Maturity looks good on you. The Lord said, this is who you are. The Lord said, this is who you are. This is who you are. And the Lord said, as long as you stay true to yourself, I'll remain true to you. Clap your hands for her. Clap your hands for her. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 16. Ooh. Isaiah 43. All right. Isaiah 43, 16. Isaiah 43. I want y'all to do me a favor, y'all right here. I want y'all to hit the floor for her. Right here, y'all right here. Y'all group right here, y'all hit the floor for her. And y'all take her out of here. Yes, indeed. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Wayne, can you do me a favor? Can you hit the floor, please? Just hit the floor, please. Please, just hit the floor. Just do it for me. Lauren, I need you to hit the floor for me. Just hit the floor for me, please. Please, please, just hit the floor for me. Dad, I need you to hit the floor for me right there. Please, I just need a hit. A few people. I just need a few that don't mind hitting the floor. Yeah. I just need a few people. Yes, Lord. Lord, have mercy. I don't need everybody, just a few. To me, boy, you're back there, you might as well praise her. You might as well praise them since you back. Yes, we did it. Are you kidding me? Lord, have mercy. Yes, sir. Tell somebody I feel better. Tell them I feel better. Seven days I done got it out of me. I feel better. Now I'm ready to receive. It took me seven days to get it out of me. And now I'm ready to receive. Now I'm ready to receive. Yes. It took me seven days. But now I'm ready to receive. 
I had to get myself cleaned up for seven days. But now I'm ready to receive it. I done got it out my system. I done cried my last tear. And now I'm ready. I done got the frustration out. I done got the anger out. And now I'm ready. 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 I'm ready now. All right, take your seats. All right, take your seats. Take your seats. Isaiah 43, verse 16 through 19. Isaiah 43, verse 16 through 19. Isaiah 43, verse 16 through 19. I said I got seven days. I got it out of my system. And now I'm ready. I got my emotions out. I got my hurt out. I got my frustrations out. I've accepted the fact that they ain't going to never apologize to me. But I'm going to get this weight up off me so I can receive what the Lord has for me. You waited looking for an apology. And God said, I just needed seven days to change your mindset. You waiting for a phone call. God said, I'm trying to change your mindset. Stop looking for what's not going to happen. He said, but keep your eyes fixed on me. I got all things under control. Don't stop praying. He'll answer you. The Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying. He'll hear you cry. The Lord has promised. And his word is true. Don't stop praying. He'll answer you. I said the Lord's going to answer you. All right, y'all let me do this. Y'all sit down. Let me do this, y'all. I got to preach this today. Isaiah 43. The Lord has promised his word is true. Don't stop praying. 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 praying. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Don't stop trusting. Don't stop whatever you do. Don't stop praying. The Lord will answer you. You got to stick to it. And the Lord will answer you. I said stick to it and he'll answer you. You got to stay with it. Just a little while longer. And he's going. I said stick to it. I said just a little, y'all stick with it, just a little while longer, he's going to answer you. The Lord said, don't give up now, give me just a little more time, and I'm going to answer you. Don't stop praying, he's going to answer you. Don't stop, don't stop now, you out there too far now, don't stop now. Go all the way out there, don't pay to it. I said, don't stop now. Whatever you do, don't stop now. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't stop. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. He brought you this far. He'll take you the rest of the way. Whatever you do, I said, if he brought you this far, He'll take you the rest of the way. But whatever you do, don't stop now. Don't stop now. You already out there. You done lost it to the deep now. It ain't no turning back. 
You gotta go straight ahead, know it. If the Lord brought you this far, He'll take you the rest of the way. He's gonna take you the rest of the way. Dry your eyes. Dry your eyes. Dry your eyes. There's better ahead for you. There's better. Dry your eyes. There's better ahead for you. All right. All right. I said there's more for you. There's more for you. There's more for you. Don't be satisfied where you are. There's more for you. We thank the Lord today. All right. Let me do this. Isaiah. Isaiah 40. 40. 3. This is, this is what the Lord says. Y'all let him praise him. You don't know what he's been through. You don't know what it took for him to be here. Isaiah 43, 16. Kendra, get up and dance with him. Renee, dance on the back side of it. Dance on that side. Michael, go on that side of him. And y'all dance with him. Because what God got for him, he can't wait to give it to the rest of y'all for y'all helping him and pulling him through. I feel God today. Come on. You got to help somebody. Come, y'all help him. He just need a little strength. That's all. Y'all help him. Don't let nobody die. Don't let nobody die. Don't let nobody die. Isaiah 43, 43, 16, 16 through 19, 16 through 19. The word says, this is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together and they lay there never to rise again extinguished snuffed out like a wick forget the former things and do not dwell on the past 
See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do not perceive it. I am making a way in the wilderness. And I'm creating streams in the wasteland. See, I am doing a new thing. Now that it springs up, the Lord asks, he said, can you perceive it? You tell me I'm grateful, but can you perceive the new thing I'm doing? Or is your mind fixed on the old? I'm making a way in the wilderness. And I'm creating streams in the wasteland or the desert. <sighs> streams in the desert. Streams in the place where water doesn't reside. A faithful God and an unfaithful people. My topic is a faithful God and an unfaithful people. Father, we bless you and thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for how you've kept us and watched over us. Now, Father, for these next few moments... Allow our ears to hear what you have to say and open up our minds to the word that you have given us. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And the menace of the year shall find me and it shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. You are the master of my fate, you are the captain of my soul. We love you now and praise you. Everybody clap them hands and tell God thank you. I said clap them hands like you've been good to you. And tell the Lord thank you. A faithful God and an unfaithful people. Uh, Max Lucado uh, simply states that God is faithful when his children are not. And what's interesting is in, in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, we see uh, down the line that there are two different things going on inside of this one chapter. The first thing that you see in the beginning from around verses 1 to about verses 13, it talks about God's proclamation uh, to Israel's redemption. So from the beginning down to about verse 13, he talks about the redemption. He talks about what he's going to do. He talks about bringing them out talks about the way he's going to made. He talks about the way he's going to do it. He gives them instructions on what he's going to do with his enemy. He tells them how he's going to handle it. He tells them what not to do. He tells them what to stay away from. He tells them, gives them an indication that he is going to handle everything. There's a slight ring. He's going to handle everything that he said that he was going to do. But isn't it interesting that in the same chapter, he tells them how he's going to do it, but then he has to remind them not to look back at what used to happen to them. And it's just like us as believers. We heard God. We've seen God. He's made ways for us. He's, he's brought us out of places we shouldn't have been in. He's covered us when, 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 when others lost. But isn't it amazing that we always revert back to what used to be instead of looking forward to what God is going to do for us. It boggles my mind that we've seen God literally raise people up. We've seen God bring people back. God has healed your body in secret. God has sustained you in public. But all the while, you still got to be reminded that God is good, that he'll keep you, that he'll make a way. We still get frustrated. Our faith starts to lack. Our trust starts to diminish. We start to eliminate the principles and what I'm trying to figure out is what changed from the first phase of your life to the second phase of your life. Has he not still been God in the second phase like he was in the first phase? Has he still not been good to you like he was in the first phase? Has he still not brought you over like he did in the first phase? But I'll tell you what it is. We get so worried about the unknown that we start to try to seclude ourselves to go back to what feels 
most comfortable. So he brought you out before, but you've never experienced this type of pain before. Come on. He kept your mind before, but you've never had to experience this level of devastation. You've, you've been able to get over people, but what you can't get over is the one that you trusted so much with your secrets and with your money. They know where the bodies are buried. And so what you are saying is, I can deal with someone that acts funny, but what I don't understand is why the ones that act funny with me are the ones that I clothed. They're the ones I gave my last to. They're the ones that owe me and never paid me back. They're the ones I stuck with when others uncovered. They're the ones that I gave seclusion to. I defended them although they were wrong. I was still their friend although I should have left them by the wayside. And the problem is from what happened before to what happened now is just causing you to have a different level of pain. But we want to be anointed and we want God to use us and we want God to make us great and we want our name to be great. We want to experience certain platforms. We want to be included in certain conversations but you don't want to go through the process that you have to go through in order to get there. There's no glory without the crushing. There's no anointing without being pressed down. There's no great name without being scandalized and people lying on you and talking talking about you and can I tell you this that's not the first person that lied on you and it won't be the last that's not the first person that turned on you and it won't be the last that's not the first person that misunderstood you and it won't be the last but what you gotta do in this season is stop giving your attention to things that don't make you better that's not producing the results and not getting you to the next level is there anybody here to date that can say for seven days I've cleared my mind for seven days I've deleted some contacts for seven days I asked some people to stop calling me for seven days I've ignored some people but can I tell you this the ones you ignored for the first seven days is coming back stronger in the next seven days so you gotta keep your hand to the plow you gotta stay focused you got to keep your attention towards God and your ear to his lips. Stop talking so much and listen to what God is saying. Stop worrying about what everybody posting and listen to what God is saying. And stop defending your life and how you live. Live your life to the best of your ability according to the principles of God. And whatever you can't do, God is faithful to bless your try to, to bless your moment to, to bless your entity to, tell somebody I may not be perfect but I'm gonna give it all I got give it all I got isn't it isn't it crazy that God is called faithful in the Bible 36 times and there are 49 verses that talk about God's faithfulness. And, and if we be honest, we can't even count how many times he has been faithful to us or we have called him faithful to, because of the countless times he has made a way for us, the countless times he has bailed us out, the countless times he has covered us. And if we be honest, it doesn't equate to the 36 times in the Bible is mentioned or the 49 verses. If we look at our calculator on the times he's made a way for us that's easily in the thousands. If we look at the number of times he has bailed us out not because of what somebody else did but because of my own decisions. The enemy didn't make you do that. You did that on your own. The enemy ain't trick you into responding. You responded to that what you doing on your own. The enemy ain't trick you to go to that house you went to that house because that's what you wanted but isn't it interesting that despite all of that when you left isn't watch this this house saved some of your art when you got up out your sin and walked out the door and got in your car the first thing you said 
that was Lord help me isn't it interesting Lester that we can sit down with a den of thieves and the first person we call on is God when we get in trouble but we still got to pump you to praise him we still got to convince you that he good how many people going to say I remember when he made a way for me when he bailed me out and when he covered me and you can look at me all you want but I'm going to give him praise because he's been faithful to me he has been faithful and if we be honest if we be honest let's really really be honest raise your hand don't look at nobody worry about yourself keep your eyes forward here if you know what worry about yourself don't look at nobody and say child you need to raise your hand because I know the stuff you did and I know the stuff you did worry about yourself but if anybody here want to be honest and say there are some moments that I miss giving God praise when I should have gave him praise because the night before I'm not talking about weeks ago I'm talking about the night before I'm not talking about years ago I'm talking about hours before I was somewhere I didn't have no business doing something I didn't have no authority to do but isn't it amazing that despite all of that God was still faithful to me and so now what we find is the mind has become polluted with the ideas of other people and our minds have become so demented that we forget so quickly of what the Lord has done for us the church is in a bad space because everybody's worried about what everybody else is doing everybody's waiting for the next person I'm not going to mention their name to make a post on Facebook and tell you to go look at it because he going live later so he can give you another scandal y'all know who I'm talking about that's your boy when he say I'm going live I want y'all to get in here because another pastor or another leader or another church mother then did something they didn't have no business instead of the saints praying all the saints go to the platform to find out what's going on but let me tell you this warning come before destruction be careful who you put your mouth on be careful who you excited about it? when they fought because baby your day is coming and you gonna want somebody to cover you tell somebody lord help me mind my business mind my business help me help me mind Help me mind my business. Just let me talk to you. See, so many times now, people feel they have a monopoly on God. And so they feel like they can tell people who not saved and who God can use and who he can't use and who the anointing on and who the anointing is not on because people got a glimpse of your personal life. But see, they don't know what your prayer is when you by yourself. And what I've learned is... The ones they talk about the most got a better prayer life than they do. The ones they scandalize the most got a better prayer life than they do. The ones they talk about the most are the ones that's laying by the pool saying, Lord, please, if you can, just help me. I'm trying. I'm giving it all I got. But it seems like every time I take a step forward, something Something comes and I take three steps back. Every time I feel like I'm on the left, something on the right pulls me back on the other side. Can I tell you what that is? It's called process. It's called the process. It's called the stage of learning. It's called maturing yourself. And you cannot go off the anointing of old. You got to find the anointing of now. The anointing of old was good for that moment. The anointing of old was beneficial for that time. But what we must understand is what worked before 
It's not going to work now. I know you went to the altar when you were six years old and you cried unto God and you spoke in tongues. But baby, you 40 now. You should have recommitted yourself by now. You should have found yourself back to God by now. Tell somebody, stop making excuses and find your way back to God. Find your way back. And so now we see here that God is talking to Israel. And he's talking to them and he's giving them instructions. And what I couldn't figure out in my mind was how can you give them the plan? How can you provide them with the tactics? How can you give them the blueprint from verses 1 to 13? But in 14, you become weary and you have to reassure them again. Can I propose this question to you? Let me ask this parenthetically. You don't need to respond just keep it to yourself how many of you are still not following the plan for your life don't say nothing too loud how many of you can look inside and say this ain't got nothing to do with the last person that hurt me this ain't got nothing to do with the last person that tried to take advantage of me this got everything to do with my unwillingness to settle in the fact that if he did it before he will do it again. Why is the one that has never left you? Why is the one that has always been there? Why is it the one whose record is clean? Why is it the one that made ways out of no ways? Why is it the one that spoke it in the woods? Why is the one that destroyed the earth and put it back together? Why is it the one that destroyed the temple and built it back? Why is it the one that stopped the group of people from building a tower to get up to him? Why is it that the one that you don't got faith in why is it that the one that can do anything is the last one that we go to for everything why is it the one that has never failed you your last option but the ones that fail you time and time again is the first person you go to and that's the reason why many of us are stuck and in a place of not knowing what's next because you're leaning on the wrong source you're leaning on the wrong one I know they promised you a platform but they can't give you nothing that they don't own themselves I know they promised you a seat at the table but how can they promise you something Calvin that they don't occupy themselves and people have tricked the people and made them believe that they're bigger than what they really are and at the end of the day you're struggling just like I am at the end of the day your funds barely mean it like mine are why can't we just be honest can't we be honest about where we are and it's, it's, it blows me because I can't figure out how he's kept us a whole year and you still need motivation to praise God. 500,000 people have died and you still need a reinforcement. Uh, you've been around a group of people that didn't tell you they had it and you still didn't contract it and you still need a reason to praise God. What a, what, where, where's our minds really at? Do we really know who God is? Do we really believe in who we say we believe in? Do we really trust that he could do nothing but fail? Do we really believe that God brought us over? Or do we really believe that it just happened by chance? Do we really believe that God really loves us? Or do we really believe that we just lucked up? Do we really believe that God brought us over? Or do we just believe it didn't happen to us yet? And I need to 
tell you what, you got to be careful what, when you leaning on what, your personal emotions and getting away from what, the faith that you need what, to make it over. What, God ain't asked you, could you see it? What, he told you to have faith that he could do it. What, God ain't asked you what, if you wanted to see the plan. What, if he wanted you to see the plan, what, he would have gave you the plan for you to see it. What, some things ain't for you to see it. Because you can't handle where you're going. Because if he show you where you're going too early, then you think you're better than the next person. So in order to keep you humble and keep you from blowing it, God hid you from it and told you just have faith in him. Just have faith in him. And so we see here now that he comes down to verse 16 and then and he begins his conversation with them and and, and he begins to, oh yeah, we're not waiting no long like we used to. Either you're going to catch on to it or you're going to miss it. I'm not killing myself. I'm not leaving here with no headache. Trying to get people to move off the word. Either you're going to respond to it or you're not. I'm going to preach it like he gave it to me. And I'm getting out of here. Verse 16 says that now he is here and the Bible says that this is what the Lord now says to them and he, he says he who made a way through the sea and, and the path through the mighty waters and, and who drew out the chariots and the horses and the army and, and the reinforcements together and they lay there and, and they never rise again extinguished, snuffed out like a wick well pastor what is it saying what what the Lord is saying to you is the last time you felt like you was going to drown in the sea I made a pathway through the sea and I caused you to jump on dry land in it and when you got on dry land and the enemy tried to bring his forces to get you not only did I get them out of here but I killed them and put them in a place I extinguished them diminished them got rid of them eliminated them God didn't wound your last enemy he extinguished them God didn't put your last enemy to the side he destroyed them never to return no more is there anybody here that can say I know for a fact that God has brought me my mighty long way there were some times when I was coming through the sea and I was trying to find my way through the path and as I began to walk through the waters I started to look on the left and the right and on the left was devastation and on the right was crucifixion but I stood in the middle and I said I can lean to this side and die I can go to this side and be destroyed but I think I'll stay in the middle and I'll live a little longer just to see what the end is going to be can I tell this to you today the reason why many of your enemies are frustrated with you it's not because they think you better it's not because God don't have his hand on you it's for the simple fact that you refuse to die but tell the enemy today you can rock me to the left but I refuse to die you can move me to the right but I refuse to die talk about me all you want I refuse to die scandalize my name I refuse to die mess with my money I refuse to die because he that began a good work in you shall will must be faithful to perform it until the coming of Jesus Christ our Lord look at your neighbor and say neighbor live through the sea live through the river live through the devastation live when they talk about you live 
when they scandalize your name. Live! Farewell. So long. I gotta go now. Thank you so much for having me today. But before I leave, I'll say this to you. Good evening. And may the Lord God bless you real good. Now that you are in the season of life you must live stay focused gird your loins stay focused stand in place stay focused don't quit stay focused and don't give up God promises to do just what he said anybody everybody somebody clap your hands open your mouth and shout glory time you get to the edge of the cliff Come on. you strike the rock instead of speaking to the rock every every time you get right to the edge of the next phase God tells you speak into your future and what you do is keep hitting where you are because of your past. I know we want to blame the last situation on our stagnation. The stagnation is not what they did. The stagnation is your mindset. You believe that in order for you to achieve the next phase, you got to have this great comeback story. And so what we do now is, Lauren, we put ourselves or involve ourselves in situations that don't have nothing to do with us. Because when I look at the story of somebody else, I want the same return that they got. But what you don't understand is, if you just do what you're supposed to do, your return is going to be bigger than what they created. Because the return that you see is not what God gave them, is what they created. And if you got the right amount of money, you can create whatever story you want and produce the result that's going to make people think that you really lived something that you didn't. I'm preaching to you. But what you need to understand is this ain't no motion picture. This ain't no biopic of your life. This is real life. And some of you almost lost your mind. Stop trying to create a story that you can't deal with emotionally. It's costing you your emotions because you're trying to pay for something that you don't qualify for. You want the grand story instead of stealing with the simple story. What's your testimony? I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Y'all ain't said, what's your story? If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. What's your story? Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but I will trust in the name of What's your story? Uh, hitherto have the Lord done great things for me. What's your story? I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall contain. What's your story? 
What's your story? And so we come and we bound trying to praise him because we're dancing on something that's fake. Hey, Gabe, how you doing? Hey, it's good to see you, Gabe. How you doing? We, the reason why we really can't get no breakthrough for Tina is because we're dancing off somebody else's story. You're trying to dance off somebody else's story to make your story sound better than what it is. But see, I can dance every week free knowing if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I don't know about you. I'm talking about me. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would. Well, now, Lauren, now we're stuck trying to prove. But when you be who you are, God will create a platform for you. And the reason why I told you to preach in the first Sunday in March is because the Lord said it's time to put you back in a secure place that don't got nothing to do with your music and got everything to do with the word that's in your mouth. And somebody going to hear you on the first Sunday. And they're going to invite you. God said, get your books ready. Because they're going to invite you from place to place. Not to sing. But they want to hear the word that's down in your mouth. And I just want you to go to every single last one. And give them everything they got. Your story just created a platform for you. People trying to take away from you. Well, Lord, I lost two leaders. It's a part of your story. Lord, I feel like I'm stuck here. People only want to hear me sing. But God, I got a word in my mouth. It's part of your story. But see, when you stand, it's going to be another law and rally in one of the crowds. And when you get up and speak the oracles of God, another law and rally is going to step up and say, thank you for your story. Because your story gave me hope that I still got a future for my story. I'm not nothing. Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me do this. Stand up. Stand up. Danielle, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Ra where you at? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. All of you, all of you know my story. I'm not talking about being a pastor. I'm talking about Will. Y'all know my story, right? You've seen me come through and out. You've seen me suffer unlawfully, each of you. But you've also seen me keep my mouth closed, admit where I was wrong, and watch God raise me up while the same ones that's talking is asking me for prayer now. You don't have to create it. You just got to live it. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to create no story. All you got to do is live your story. And you know why my story is a bestseller when it comes to redemption? Because when I sit down at the table, I tell the whole story. I don't leave no parts out. I don't leave no scenarios out. I tell the whole story. Because if the Lord did it for me, he'll do the same thing for you. And I just want to know, is there anybody here today that can say, I got a real story. It ain't fake. It ain't phony. You might not want to sit next to me once you hear it. But I got a story of hitherto have the Lord done great things for me. I got a story. I got a story. I got a story. That's why I'm able to wake up in the morning. And sometimes if London is in school, sometimes I'll just get up from my desk. She said, oh, Daddy, excuse me. 
I'm in school right now. You know what I tell her? Well, mute your screen. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm going to go on this side. But you don't know what God did for me for you to be here. So since you don't know the story yet, I'm going to praise him until I'm able to shut. I'm going to praise him until I'm able to share my story with you. That's why I praise him. Because I got a story. That's why I praise him. Because I got a story. That's why. Because I got a story. That's why. I got a story. I got a story. I got a real story. I said I got a real story. I got a real story. I got a real story. The Lord's been faithful to me. I got a real story. That the Lord's been faithful to me. I know it didn't always feel good, but it's been good for you. Yes, indeed. I got a real story. You ought to praise him for your story. You ought to give him praise for your story. Give me one minute, y'all. Hold on. Y'all give me one minute. Watch this. I want you to understand who you serve. And from here, you will decide if who you serve is worthy of your praise. Now listen, when I'm done, because we can ready to go. When I'm done, the only people I want to respond are the ones that say, I serve a God of the impossible. The scripture in 43 and Isaiah says, Created. I'm creating. Creating rivers in the wilderness. And I'm creating streams in the desert. If I remember correctly, the desert is called the wasteland. Because nothing is there. There's no, you can't even live in the desert because your body needs oxygen and it's not there. But he said, I'm creating what they say can exist in a place so you can exist. And I know the last thing almost took your breath out of here, but the reason why you're still alive it's because God created a stream in the wasteland for you. Only if you fought you out. Only if we created it for you. Only if we created it for you. Your tears created the stream to bring you out of the wasteland. Yes, indeed. Yes, Lord. I said it's the streams. It's the streams. Yes, Lord. Yes, indeed. This is not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair.
Ella. Hey, man. 
I said if I had 10,000 tongues, I just couldn't drink them enough. And I don't know about you, but I made a vow to the Lord. And, and I don't care if nobody helped me. I said I made a vow to the Lord. And the song says, and I won't take it back. And then it says I made a holy vow. Hey, and I won't take it back. I made a vow to the Lord. So every, hey, every chance I get.
is true. Hey. So say, don't stop praying. You laugh. Can we sing it? Say, don't stop praying. Come on. The Lord is not. Personal. The Lord has promised, hey, His word is true. Come on, so don't stop praying. 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 You gotta 